In this video, we're going to be investigating one of the concepts that we've seen as early as pre-calculus, and now that we have access to integration, we can make it make a little bit more sense. This is referred to as the law of natural growth, or the law of natural decay. It applies to most things that occur in nature when it comes to growing or decaying. The law of natural growth or decay states that the rate at which the size of an object changes, that could be a population, that could be a mass of a radioactive element, could be lots of things, is proportional to the size of the object. Now what we're going to do is define a couple of variables and set up a differential equation that models this situation. Then we're going to solve the differential equation. So we will let A refer to the amount amount, there we go, amount of the object, or the size of the object, or whatever it is you want to call it. So the law of natural growth and decay states that the rate at which the size of the object is changing is proportional to, that means a constant times, the size of the object. We'll refer to that as A. We're also going to throw in an initial condition. The initial condition is simply going to be at time t equals zero, we're going to refer to the amount of the thing that we have as a naught. Naught, or the subscript zero, gets used very frequently to refer to the initial amount of something. Very common notation used in math, chemistry, and physics. <clears throat> so with those things in mind, we're going to solve this initial value problem. The first thing that we're going to do is separate our variables over here by multiplying both sides by our differential dt as well as dividing both sides by a. We're just going to make this a one-step process. On the left-hand side, that'll give us dA over a, and that'll be equal to k times t. Uh, also dt, going to have that in there as well. In this form, we are ready to integrate. Integrating both sides, we are going to get the natural log of the absolute value of a, though the absolute value is kind of superfluous and redundant since a is referring to the amount of an object, a shouldn't be allowed to be negative. This, uh, well, this t really shouldn't be here, that's, uh, that's me jumping the gun there, so my apologies about that. This should just be k times dt so that at the next step that's where we're going to see a k times t. Apologies about that. Then we can also plug in a plus c. Now, as you saw in the previous videos, the options that we have are we can immediately solve for the plus C using the initial condition, or we can just keep solving for capital A. So we'll point out here the absolute value bars are not needed since we're representing a physical quantity. As such, we're going to exponentiate both sides. This will give us A is equal to e raised to the power of kt plus c. However, we can apply the same property that we used to a previous problem to refer to this as times e to the c, and then we'll just refer to e to the c as some other letter like capital C. This is where capital C is going to be equal to e raised to the lowercase c power. Now with that in mind, let's go ahead and plug in our initial condition so that we can solve for that capital C. So we'll plug in at t equals 0 and a is equal to a naught. That gives us a naught is equal to capital C times e to the k times 0. However, 0 times k is going to be 0, e to the 0 is 1, and 1 times c will just be c. As such, we can conclude that our capital C is actually equal to a naught. As such, we have the following. In function notation, a of t is equal to a naught e to the kt. Now, to distinguish between the growth model and the decay model, if k is greater than 0, then we have a growth model. And if k is less than 0, we have a decay model. The reason that we know that is not because of what we have at the end, but rather our original initial differential equation. If k is positive, this means that your derivative is positive, which would indicate that something is increasing in size. 
If k is negative, this indicates that a derivative is negative, indicating that this thing would be decreasing in size. Once we have set up the law of natural growth or the law of natural decay, you can use this as uh, an algebraic expression to make predictions about the future.